Good morning and welcome to Berean Family Worship Center. We do pray that the Lord bless and fall upon us afresh this morning. Mm -hmm. We thank you for joining our live stream broadcast. Uh, I am Dr. Jocelyn Purnell Henderson. Mm -hmm. This is my husband, Pastor Walter Henderson III, and we're the senior leaders for Berean Family Worship Center. And we are so delighted to do the will of our Father. Amen. Amen. Praise Glory God. to God. Thank you, Lord. Uh, I want to invite you right now to go on and get your Bibles, get something to write with, as we come together to break the word of life. I am going to go in and right now to the scripture and bringing it up in front of me. There's this equipment. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> The scripture that I will be reading, give me one moment. Matter of fact, I, I'll, just, I'll just read a scripture, amen? <laughs> yes, hallelujah. Uh, I'm looking for the, okay, there we go, there the Bible is, hallelujah. <laughs> uh, I still can't get the scripture up, if you just go on and read, Pastor. Uh, any, any particular scripture, and I'll come back and read the scripture at the end, okay. or right after you read. <laughs> I can't get, right. I can't get, can't get in. Okay, that's no problem. Yes, thank you, Lord God. Pray, pray, y'all. I'll just do one scripture here. Actually, <laughs> praise God, and this is part of the lesson text that we're going to be doing today. But one scripture, Luke the 18th chapter, and I'll just read one verse there. And he spake a parable unto them to this end. <laughs> That men are <laughs> always to pray and not to faint. Yes, Praise thank God. You, Lord Hallelujah. God. All right. Amen. Yeah. Go on and pray it. Yes, Father, sir. thank you this day for the privilege and the honor for us to yes, be gathered thank you, together. Father. And thank you, Lord, even as we come this day, we put our hearts and mind upon you. Yes. Father, we just forget about everything else that's happened before we got here. Thank you, Father. Things that we have to do after this is over, Lord. Mm -hmm. This is the time to yes. be with you and in your presence, Glory God. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus, Father, because your presence right now is more important than anything else we do. Glory. So we invoke your presence at this time in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you that in the presence of the Lord yes. is a fullness mm -hmm. of joy. And so, God, we thank you that we're entering in. Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Father. And we understand what we come by praise. Hallelujah Glory to God. Glory to God. So we bless you for being our God. Mm -hmm. And we bless you for being so good to us, God, who have awakened Lord. us to a new day, a day that we've never seen before. And in this day, Lord, this day has assignment yes, to it. Hallelujah you, to God. This day has privileges and honors in it. Glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. You said in your word, if we draw nigh unto you, you will. that you will draw nigh Hallelujah. unto us. Hallelujah, God. And so, Father, you say, enter in with thanksgiving. On, Glory to on. God. Thank you this day for your great love for us. Thank you this day yes. that you are our God and that we're your people. Thank you this day that we're born of yes, your spirit. You, Made those new creation in Christ Jesus. All Hallelujah. things has passed away. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, and God. everything has become new. Glory to Glory. God. Hallelujah. We thank you for this family being gathered today. Praise yes, God. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, we're all sitting, waiting on you and to hear what you will speak to us individually, to our families, and Father, to this corporate Glory. body of believers in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. Anoint our understanding yes. today. Hallelujah. To hear from you and to hear from heaven. Glory to God. Anoint our eyes to see what we could see before. And anoint our ears to be able to hear and to discern distinctly what you're saying yes, in you. the mighty name of Jesus. Anoint the airways, glory to God, that they will function right. Yes. Anoint this internet, it will function Thank right. You, glory to God forevermore. <laughs> and anoint our hearts to humble ourselves before you now. Yes, to you, know God. and recognize your presence, praise God. And since that's so, what manner of men and women, oh, young men and women oh, we ought to be? What you, manner Lord. of conversation? all we to have because we're in your presence. Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Thank you for your presence now. Thank you for dealing with us. Yes. Thank you for drawing us. Thank you for encouraging us. 
We speak that in the name of Jesus, Hallelujah. your name will be magnified. Your purposes will be discovered. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that all that we are and hope to be, God, you're encouraging us. You're yes. building us up on our most holy faith. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. And that we are the children of the most high God. Yes, Hallelujah, God. Now anoint this service. Anoint this time together. Mm -hmm. And let the spirit of the living God, hallelujah, manifest right in our presence. God, we worship you and we bless you, Lord. We give you glory. What a great God you are. You are so mighty in this presence. Hallelujah. You are mighty in our hearts. Glory to God this day. You are the most high God. There's none like you. No place, nowhere. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, Father, have your way in this place. Hallelujah. Let the name of Jesus be magnified. God, we give you praise for this. Thank you for what you're doing, what you are about to do. Now, get glory for yourself. We praise you and worship you now. In Jesus' Thank name you, we Jesus. pray. <laughs> amen, amen. Hallelujah amen. to the most high God. Glory to Glory God. Glory to God. There is none like you, no place, nowhere, no time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I pray that there's praise in your mouth. <laughs> Hallelujah. The high praises of God. Yay. Thank you, Lord God. And that you are excited about him and about excited about his word. Glory praise to God. God today. So we <laughs> praise God. Get, get ready. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's let God do what only he can do. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, we were talking about spiritual discipline. We started that on last time. In fact, we talked about run that you may obtain. And that's very important. Praise God. In other words, that we are to run this race like we're running for victory. Pray God, running like we have a purpose and an aim. Hallelujah. We're not dragging through and just going from day to day. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Every day has an assignment to it, and we are pursuing God, and that's going to be very, very important. Praise the name of the Lord. Well, last time we talked about spiritual disciplines, that they are biblical principles that a believer does to grow spiritually in Christ. Mm -hmm. So these principles, as we said, they're not something going to make us, you know, up in and by themselves that we have to do. It is not religious. It's just a training of our flesh and a training of our mind that we can do certain disciplines. And those things will help us, praise God, to be more Christ-like. Mm -hmm. Whether we do these or not will not change God's love for us, praise God. But it may change what we can discern and hear from God Sorry. and have a clarity of our decision-making. I don't know about you, but that's important to me, praise God. In 1 Timothy 4 and 7, the scripture said, But refuse profane and old wives' fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. Exercise thyself rather. We talked about last time that the word exercise in the Greek means that it means to train vigorously with the mind or the body. Mm -hmm. Now, vigorously mm -hmm. means that we need to put some, uh, some function into Come it. On. We need to put some <laughs> effort into it. Amen. To praise God. To train ourselves. Wait a minute. To be godly or godlike in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise God. And we said that Paul told Timothy to train vigorously for godliness, which means God's likeness. Mm -hmm. So there's some training. Praise God. That word uh, in the Greek, we get our word gym from it. We talked about that. It was a place where you go. And it's a place when they were training, they would strip themselves of everything that was causing them to be a uh, heavy laden or because it's like to run and get ready to run. He don't run in comeback boots. Amen. Come on. You get some sneakers on. Praise God. And we can see our track and field of the day. They try to get. Uh, in fact, the word actually in the Greek means to train naked. But it, it didn't literally mean, but it means you strip down everything you possibly can so you be light. And that goes with scripture in Hebrews. Amen. It tells us to, amen, strip off everything that's hindering us from running this race. So if there's something in my life that's slowing me down or keeping me from really running the race God has set before me, the Bible says I need to get rid of that. That's right. Praise God. And so that's what this means. We need to train ourselves to do this. We talked about also that the end of the goal of this discipline is to be godly or to be holy. And praise God. But every man that strive is striving for the mastery. We talk about how the Greek word agonizmei, which means agony. Mm -hmm. There's an agony involved in it to contend for victory. When you're an athlete and you're training, there's some agony. Praise <laughs> God. Amen. You, you're going through the training. Amen. Getting ready for the season. If it's basketball, football, baseball, or you're running track. 
amen, they're going to put you through some stuff to get that body back in place. So there's some agonizing coming into it. But with us, with Christ, we have to understand a natural tendency for every one of us is to be lazy. Yeah. And so we have to make up our mind. It's going to be some agonized training. Amen. <laughs> so then and I go and hit that treadmill. It ain't because we, we can't hardly wait to get down there. But We're we right. know to get where we need to be or to get our bodies in the shape. You do, we need to go down there whether we feel like it or not. That's right. Praise God. And after we finish, we feel glad. We feel better. <laughs> Praise God. We did it. Well, these spiritual disciplines, you're going to feel better when you do them. Praise mm -hmm. God. Because they're going to cause you and I to train that way. Paul stated that athletes practice their discipline for a wreath crown that would fade away quickly. However, the believer is looking forth to an eternal crown. Mm -hmm. What Paul was saying, if they're doing that, we're doing it for a wreath. Glory to God. We're training for eternity. <laughs> Praise God. Something going to last forever and ever and ever. Yeah. And he said, if they're motivated for a wreath, we ought to be motivated for eternal purposes. Come on here. So you and I need to get our minds and change the way I think. We, Amen? And that's what repentance is. We change the way we think. Now, that was from the last time we talked about that. I want to begin this, this time, as we're looking at this, to talk about eternal disciplines. And this actually going to be part one of two of eternal. I couldn't get all of them. And because each one of these disciplines, we look at them, I gave you 12 of them, whether we will cover them all or not, I'm not sure. I don't think I will. But the, each one of them can be a series by themselves. And I don't—I mean, it can be a long, every one of them. But what I want to do is give a synopsis, if you will, a shortened version of it, highlight some things, why these things are so important in our spiritual discipline. All right? So, first of all, in these spiritual discipline, I want to talk about prayer. I think I start here because everything should start with prayer. Amen. If we start yes, out sir. this this morning with prayer, uh, when <laughs> you come together, when I get up and start my morning, I want to start it with prayer. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Everything I do, I want to start it in our office. When we come together before we go to work, one of the first thing we do is start it off with prayer. Prayer. Mm -hmm. Amen. It should be the major thing we want to do. So I'm going to give some synopsis of it. And uh, praise God. So if you go ahead and get Luke, the 18th chapter. And uh, verse one, the Amplified Classic. But let's let's start with this. So these are going to be the internal. I would uh, ask that you take some notes here. First of all, the first one I want to talk about is prayer. Jesus stated that men ought, if necessary, always at all time to pray and not to faint. I want to change that. Luke eighteen and one, and we're gonna. I didn't do the, the the whole total scriptures there, and I want you to do that. Luke eighteen one through eight, if you would. So change it back to King James. And we're going to read our scripted text for this whole thing. Amen. All right. I got my Bible, y'all. Here we go. Hallelujah. Praise and God. The 18th chapter. Yes. Verse 1. Here we go. King James Version. Mm -hmm. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Glory to God. Saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regardeth man. Hallelujah. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, Come on, come on. <laughs> nor regard man, yes. yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And what did the Lord say? And the Lord said, hallelujah, mm -hmm. hear what the unjust judge said. Praise God. Verse 7. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Praise God. Now, in this parable, he's not comparing that we should continue just because uh, wanting God to hear up and do what he want to do and that we got to continue to get God to do what he's doing. He's actually contrasting between himself and that of an unjust. This unjust person, she had to continue to do that. But he said, would not God? See, mm -hmm. and so he's getting us to understand God loves us. If there is something going on and it looked like God hadn't showed up, what the Lord wants to understand is there's a reason behind it. Yeah, yeah. And that he's not just delaying for the sake mm -hmm. of delaying. That's not God. 
he ha something is going on behind the scene that he's dealing with or that needs to be dealt with us. And so what he wants us to understand, if you go through that, uh, praise God, it's going to be very important that we understand that he says after these things, and we're going to see this a little bit later on, that when he comes to the earth, will he find faith? Come on. Because men and women will give up. You know, if it don't happen when they think it mm -hmm. should, whatever, they give up. And he's saying, look, if this unjust <laughs> person would finally do it, he said, don't you know your father? who yes. loves you on, is going to make it happen. Yes, Amen. Sir. I but, believe that. All right. Praise God. <laughs> let, let's pray. All of us believe it. Hallelujah. Because we sure need to. I know I do. Praise God. Now, if you would again, uh, Luke, the first chapter, the 18th chapter, first verse now, but in the Amplified Classic, what we we're going to do before, because he brings us something that verse I just want to touch. Go ahead, Sister. 18, 1. Uh-huh. Luke 18, verse 1 in the Amplified Classic. Yes. Also, Jesus told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not to turn coward. Now listen to not this. Not to faint. The, the whole issue of this verse is, and I'm starting reading that again. I want you to pull that one word out. Go ahead and say it again. Also, Jesus told them a parable to this effect. This effect means to this extent, this is what he wants you to get out of this. Go ahead, out of this parable. Go ahead. That they ought always to pray. Mm-hmm. And not to turn coward. Go ahead. Not to faint. Mm -hmm. Not to lose heart. Come on. And not to give up. Now see, this is the whole end of the parable. He's going to give this parable. He said, this is what I want you to understand. I don't want you to faint. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to turn coward. I don't want you to... Isn't that interesting, the wording of this? Praise God. And that's exactly when you look in the Greek, what these words are saying. Praise God. So it means to turn coward, to lose heart. Mm -hmm. And that when you do that, you just give up. Praise yeah. God. And that's when we get frustrated with God. We get frustrated. I don't understand. Because God said, really, if you knew me. Yeah, come on here. You understand that I'm not holding. No good thing will I withhold from you. I believe that. And I got to keep praying, believing, and standing on this word of God. Jesus Ooh, was stating Lord. that it's the believer's duty to persevere in prayer. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> you keep praying. Hallelujah. And that's what he wants to say. This woman had a perseverance. It's like, no, I ain't going nowhere until you give me my stuff. That's right. She give believed that she had a right to Come what on. she was asking for. The condition was right. She met all the conditions. Come on. So I'm going to stay on this. Right here. And for us too often, what we have a tendency to do is to give up. Yeah. Those faint heart. And then we turn and do something wrong or make some bad mistakes or do some bad discernment. And so prayer to the believer, this is an, an eternal thing, is very, very important. The yes. believer needs to develop a constant spirit of prayer Come on. in order to maintain a consciousness of God's presence. Do you know that the more you pray, the more you are conscious of God's presence? Yes, come on. You here. can't sit there and pray like your God ain't there or you don't <laughs> sense nothing like that. Because you know, if it's that dry, it's an issue with you. Praise yes. God. It's something about when we pray, we're coming before our Father who loves us, who cares for us. And so we have to develop a sense of continuously prayer Glory. and practicing the presence of God that he's always there. And that's what David again meant. I have set the Lord always, always before me. He said, I'm going to live like God is there all the time. Come on. So I ain't got to go find him. I'm not <laughs> praying trying to get him. He's there. I'm talking to him just like he's been there all alone. Praise God. And he knows, he understands, he's going through everything I've gone through. Wherever I've been, he's been. Whatever I've seen, he's seen. Yes. Whatever I'm thinking, he knows the thought. So I'm not, watch this, I'm not educating God of what I'm going through. Come I'm not ahead. telling God what I'm thinking. God said, I already yes, know Yes, come on. What I'm coming to him for, hallelujah, is the solution. <laughs> Glory to God. And so this is very, very important. Now, hallelujah. the Bible says, and let me give you some scriptures here. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face continually. First Chronicles 1611, uh, 1611 says that. Seek the Lord in his strength. Wait a minute. Seek his face continually. continually. Praise God. So we, we have some reference of this in that what I want us to see is that we ought to be praying without ceasing. Glory to seek God. Seek his face continually. Glory. Look at this. This is Matthew 26, 41. Watch. And pray. Don't just be watching. We be watching, then we, we get disillusioned. <laughs> Praise God. Because we stop praying. We, we get disillusioned sometimes about what we see. Yeah, Instead of true. walking by faith. The scripture said, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. 
which is an indication to me if I'm not praying right, temptation means not only a testing, it means mm -hmm. a trial. And so we will enter into it. That means we'll yield to it. We'll get yes. into it. The more you pray and continuously pray, the less temptation or you're going to enter into. That is good. It becomes a prayer life. Praise God. The spirit indeed is willing. <laughs> Come on. But the flesh is weak. <laughs> Hallelujah. You and I got to discern that our flesh is weak. Yeah. Glory to God. And you, you, we can say it ain't. We can say not. Listen, we got them double natures working here. <laughs> and that is, praise God, we're born of God's spirit. But as long as we got this flesh house, praise God, this thing has a nature of sin. And God gave us the Holy Spirit to overcome it, to oh, override oh. it, so that it does not dominate our life. Praise God. Uh, here's Romans 12 and 12. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, <laughs> continuing instant, devoted to, Come on. to continue all the time in prayer. That's what that word instant means. Instant means devoted to, to continue all the time in prayer. So let me read it again. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. So mm -mm -mm. God is showing us victory, how this thing works. I mean, it's not that we earn it. It gives us a reminding because we should be praying God's word back to him. And faith come by hearing yeah. and hearing by the, the word, word of God. So we shouldn't just be praying all kind of aimlessly prayer. We're taking God's word and bringing it back to him. God, this is what you say. Mm -hmm. Amen. Isn't that what Jehoshaphat said? <laughs> Pray God. They come back and say, now, Lord, you say it. <laughs> Amen. Th th that's why I'm here talking to you now. Praise God. Ooh. Hallelujah. <laughs> and, and this is what Daniel would say. This is what they would say. You said, and and, and uh, uh, Solomon would say. You said that when we've sinned, when this happened, Lord, that if we would come and God do this. Do you see, he's bringing the word of God back to him yes. so, because that brings faith. That means I got something to stand on God, and that is your holy word. To God. Praise God. And again, that word there talks about instant in prayer, I mean devoted to prayer. It means to continue all the time yeah. in prayer. Praise God. Uh, Ephesians 6.18, praying always come on. with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching there too with all perseverance and supplication for all the same. Notice that word perseverance again. We're going to have to persevere in prayer. Yes, sir. And that means you pray all the time. You keep praying. <laughs> Hallelujah. You stay with it. The devil tried to trouble you, said it's going to You go right back and say, Lord, yes. now your word said this, God, I want to thank you what Lord your word is declared to me. I want to thank you as I bring your word. It's not a reminder to you, but I'm reminding Come myself, Come glory to God, what you have declared. And I want to bless you, God, that you gave me this word. I want to bless you that you're not like a man that you yes. should lie. I want to bless Hallelujah. you that your word is my foundation that I stand mm -hmm. upon. Hallelujah. You, Talk about one old preacher. I remember years ago, we were praying for stuff. He, he took the Bible and literally stood on it. I know other people have done it as well, but he literally he said, I'm literally standing on this word. Yes. Now, that's not necessarily what God meant. But he said, whatever it takes to get my mind where it needs to be, Come on. standing on the promises of God, my Savior. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Sing your song. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, we used to sing that song and be marching with it. Yeah. Standing. <laughs> Glory to God. On the promises of God, Glory my Savior. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Now, listen. Philippians 4 and 6. Be careful for nothing. Mm -hmm. But in everything, everything by prayer, <laughs> amen. The old songs are all because we don't come to the Lord, amen. In prayer, what a friend I have in Jesus, amen. Mm -hmm. And it talks about that. Listen, Jesus will handle every need that we have. It's stuff that we go through because we didn't pray about it first, yes. because we didn't bring it to God first. We thought we was grown enough, amen, to do whatever. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now I know we know the word and we'll do the word. But praise God, this said, but in Paul, in everything by prayer and supplication, but please don't stop there, <laughs> with <laughs> thanksgiving, thanksgiving, hallelujah, let your request be made known unto God. Praise God. So we understand, be careful or cautious about nothing. Pray about everything. That's right. And we're, sometimes we'll have people go, well, why you got to pray about it? Because <laughs> the Lord said pray about everything. <laughs> Glory to that. I'm just doing what God said. Ooh, now listen, hallelujah. you might not have to do that. I do. But but it keeps me safe. Hallelujah. <laughs> it keeps me in the presence of God. It keeps me talking to God because I might start praying and God said, you need to adjust that just a little bit here. 
So that's very, very important. Praise God. Hallelujah. And then finally, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Colossians 4 and 2. Isn't that the same thing? Praise God. It's the same identical thing. And we need to understand, if, if the Lord allowed and part of this, I really want to talk to us about praise. I want to talk to us about Thanksgiving. Yeah. When we get a revelation of what this actually does for us, mm -hmm. isn't it interesting that he say, enter into his courts with Thanksgiving. Do you? Yes, sir. Do you? Enter in with Thanksgiving. You come in falling out. Listen, there's a reason. God not just saying that and come before his courts with praise. Yes. Be thankful. The Bible said this. <laughs> now listen to this. Come before his court with praise. Watch this. God inhabits. If you want to invoke his presence, mm -hmm. if you want him to do, start praising. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. That's why I said when you ask to do it with some thanksgiving. If you want his presence, praise God. I don't care what how bad it got. I challenge you to start praising him. Come on here. I challenge you. <laughs> Uh, listen, David had it right. Praise yes, God. Sir. Amen. Yes, then he sir. said, he said that his mouth will be continually. Mm -hmm. Hey, praise God. And so it is understanding what happens when I do that. Yes. I'm invoking his presence. I'm bringing his presence. If he inhabited, praise God. That's why we start services with praise and worship. Come on. You understand? It's not just we get there and folks looking around. He said, you don't have an idea, do you? We are invoking the presence of God. Yes. And amen. So Thanksgiving, it doesn't have to be with song. It just needs to be a Thanksgiving. Always do that. Praise God. And so that's why he said continue in prayer and watch in the same. In other words, as you are still looking for God to answer, keep praying. Mm -hmm. Continue in the same. And then make sure you're doing adding Thanksgiving to God. Come on here. <laughs> like you believe God heard you. <laughs> Like you believe God's going to move on your behalf. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, we might not understand his timing or how we're going to do it. Let's don't even try to tell him how to do it. Hey, amen. Let's stay in prayer and thanksgiving. So now this prayer is a part of our discipline. Now, this is not a dissertation on prayer. Hallelujah. Because as I said, we could do a major series. But this is something we do internally. This is something that we're going to talk as we finish these about external things we do. But internally, we need to have a prayer in our life. Mm -hmm. We can't start out praying for hours. <laughs> we have to train so that our prayer muscles can be developed. Come on here. Now, now again, <laughs> using the analogy of, of one who's training in sports or one who's training to sprint. Amen. If you never ran the mile, you can't just jump out and do a mile. They're going to pick you up and take you to the doctor, man. I'm telling you right now. You try to keep up with them boys been running. Amen? But sometimes we need to understand we have to train ourselves. Yeah. If you can do five minutes consistently, then do it consistently. That's right. And it'll lead to ten minutes. Mm -hmm. And then it'll lead to that. Because you're not faking it till you make it, praise God. You are developing your prayer muscle. You're trying to hang sometimes with some of these saints that love to pray, they used to pray. Praise God. You're going to be in trouble. I talked <laughs> last time about my mother and them prayer group. Amen. They meet every week. But those sisters, go, you're going to be there for a few hours. They're going to pray. And they're going to pray to, as they old saints, you said, to heaven get the news. Hallelujah. Praise God. And then they're going to rejoice like God heard them Come when they pray. And when they get through praising, shouting. You know, ain't no church with no music. You know, right now we got to have some music before we can pray. Them folks had no music at all. They would pray. And the Spirit of God would fall, and then they worship. And then when they finished worship, the next person would pray. Hallelujah. And when you came, you was expected to pray. It, it wasn't going to be nobody there just looking. Hallelujah. Pray. They, even when they bought the tune, they said, do what you can. Because they were training us how to pray. All right? So that's the first discipline I want to talk to you about is prayer. You and I internally need prayer. We got to become a house of prayer. Yes, Praise sir. God. Individually, your ministry, whatever you do is prayer. Praise God. You're working with people and you're going to do something. You say you got a ministry and you ain't starting in prayer. Come you ain't on. got no ministry. Come on. I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> you you got know, a business. Listen, yeah, that's a business. You're trying to train people. Listen, <laughs> stop trying to train people. You know what? Give them the word. Yeah. Model it. And then expect the Holy Ghost to train people. Mm -hmm. Praise God. That's what we do. We're going to give you that. I promise we're training people, but we train them the flesh. You know what? The flesh is just like sometimes, you know, you, it, it mimics something, but there's no change. And therefore, I don't want to be a pastor or a teacher who try to give you something to deal with your sin. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Please understand this, because that's what these other organizations, they got organizations doing much better than us, like AAA and all these other, they can train people. Here's the problem, you don't get deliverance. Uh, we want to put it so that the Holy Ghost deliver yes, us. Yes, come on. Amen. Isn't that what Jesus said? Pray, deliver us from. Amen. Mm -hmm. that, that's what we want to do. We want deliverance, and then we know how to maintain it with these disciplines. That's oh, what the discipline Lord. do, is to open our hearts and minds to good. God's way of doing it. We put ourselves with these disciplines in his presence so he can show us through the word. And that believe me, read right in the Bible study. Praise <laughs> God. Hallelujah to God. So number two. This is eternal, uh, internal, I'm sorry, discipline is called Bible study. All right? So the Lord informed Joshua that the key to his being successful in his assignment is obedience to the word of God. Now, Sister Anderson, I have here, but I want you to go to Joshua 1. And I want you to start at verse 3. I have my notes here different, but I'm being led of the Holy Ghost. Joshua, the first chapter... And if you would, please turn and get your Bible so you can look at this with us. Joshua, the first chapter, I want you to start at verse 3 and read through verse 9. Praise King James. Him. King James Version. All Thank right. you so much. Joshua 1, yes. King James Version, reading starting with verse 3 through 9. Right, and I may stop you. Praise <clears throat> God. Go ahead. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, mm -hmm. that have I given unto you. Come on. As I said unto Moses. From the wilderness in this Lebanon, Praise God. even unto the great river, mm -hmm. the river Euphrates, yes. all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, Praise God. shall be your coast. Go ahead. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee I want to bless all him. the days of thy life. I want to worship him. As I was with Moses, yes. so I will be with thee. Glory to God. I will not fail thee. Oh my God. Nor forsake thee. Come on. Be strong and of a good courage. Yes. For unto this people shall thou divide an inheritance the land. Yes. Praise which God. I swear unto their fathers mm -hmm. to give them. Only be thou strong Come on, and very courageous mm -hmm. that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Praise God. Turn not from it to the right Don't hand do it. or to the left mm -hmm. that thou mayest prosper whithersoever Thank you, Lord. thou goest. Hallelujah. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, mm -hmm. but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, Yes, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Why? For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Then thou shalt have good success. Praise God. Verse 9. Yes. Have not I commanded thee? Huh. Be strong. And of a good courage. Thank you, Lord. Be not afraid. Yes. Neither be thou dismayed. Why? For the Lord is with thee wheresoever thou goest. Thou go Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, so again, this Bible study, God was showing him, and I'm going to take this and really pull some things out of this, that listen to me. You need to understand something, son. The word of the God is going to be the key. Mm -hmm. Now, it also in 2 Timothy 2, 15, it says, Study to show thyself approved unto who? God. God. You're not studying to try to impress people. That's right. You're not reading your book you've been reading so you can have some little fancy quotes to people and <laughs> put things out like that. There's nothing wrong with those things. But here's what is important. My study of the word of God is to show myself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed. In other words, if I'm not studying the word, mm -hmm. then I'm going to be ashamed because I'm trying to set things or do some things that is not according to God's word. Now watch this now. It goes on to say, praise God, rightly dividing the Come word on. of truth. That's now key. why is it important to That's rightly key. divide the word of truth? Because if I'm not rightly divided, I'm taking wrong direction. I have wrong discernment. I'm making wrong decision predicated on a wrong understanding of God's mm -hmm. word. I want to show you how important this is to you and me. 2 Timothy 3, 16-17 said, All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Does that mean Old Testament too? Yes, sir. All scripture. Does that mean the old prophet? All scripture. Yes, sir. I got people say, well, that ain't none of my covenant, old covenant. I'm just under the new covenant. The Bible says all scripture is given because the all scripture is helps us to understand the new, praise mm -hmm. God, and to keep us from getting into error, praise God. 
it goes on to say, and is profitable. If I don't believe the scriptures is profitable, I won't spend a lot of time in it. Yes, that's good. And so it said it's prof profitable for doctrine. That's your dogma. Mm -hmm. That is for reproof. It will correct you and straighten your thinking out. For correction, you said that's wrong. For instructions in righteousness, in right living, that's in good. right doing. Praise God. 17, that the man of God may be perfect, that means complete, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. In other words, the works God call you, you cannot do if you're not studying. That's good. You cannot do it properly. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean because God gave us a gift. The gift was something that we didn't earn. We can do things in, with those gifts, praise God. But to use the gift correctly. I used the last time where a person is, let's say, a gifted uh, swimmer and going to swim in the Olympic. Well, all of us can swim, mm -hmm. but all of us don't have the gift to go and be uh, to uh, uh, operate in the Olympics because we're limited in what we have. M my gift then can do this. All of us can sing. <laughs> yes, okay? Lord. But now we not <laughs> might not be able to get before thousand and sing because our voice won't carry that. You understand? <laughs> now, even though God. I can sing, I can go do some training to perfect that. And make it even greater. I can learn how to breathe. Amen. I can learn how to uh, enunciate certain words and emphasis. I can do a lot of those things. But if I don't have the gift. Now, all I'm saying is whatever gift God gave you, the word will help you to use it more proficiently. That's my only point I'm trying to make here. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. Now, the Lord has given us. the Lord. Let's go back to the scripture now that, that we just read. The Lord had given several assurances. To Moses. I want you to be able to see this. In verse 3 and 4, he told him the location were given to him and his people. See, it's not enough to want to do what God gave you. You need to be in the right place to do what God That's gave good. you. Amen? Sometimes you can go on, on a certain place and it won't work there because you're not in the right place. God told Abraham, go to the place I'm showing you. Now, he could have went somewhere else and tried to work what God was telling mm -hmm. him. It won't be the same. That's right. So God had given him a guarantee. Here's the location. Here's the place. And hey, by the way, I've already given it to you. It doesn't matter who's sitting on there, squatting on there when you get there. You're going there, amen, to divest them. You're going there to move them, praise God. And so don't worry about if somebody already sitting on your stuff. Yeah, go get your stuff. They're going to have to give it up. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the okay. God giving him certain assurances. Praise God. And sometimes we're trying to go get somebody else's stuff, but God gave them an assurance. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be very important. That's verse 3 and 4. In verse 5, the Lord guaranteed him that his presence would be there. Glory. He said, I'm going with you, Moses. Just go ahead. I'm going to be right there. Praise God. Now, you don't want to go anywhere that God's not taking his presence there. Amen. Moses had told me in another place that, Lord, if, if you're not going with us, let oh, me know right now. I ain't going. Uh, uh, anyway, <laughs> see, a lot of us don't care where his presence there or not. We made up our mind. This is what we're going to do. Listen, folks, that's of the flesh. That's carnality. Yes. Wherever I'm going to go and do, I need the presence of a living and a holy and a righteous God. Because that's the safest place. With the anointing of God, I can do more. Praise God. Oh. And I can do it easier with that anointing. Praise mm -hmm. God. So here's what I want you to understand by that. Oh, bless God. <laughs> Verse 6. Joshua needed to be strong and courageous. Now, the word strong there means to be obstinate. Are stubborn. Mm -hmm. You got to get to a place that I'm like that, that woman. I, I ain't going nowhere. I know what the Lord told me and I'm assured of it. Now, I'm not talking about you trying to stand there, but you believe God told you. You're not sure about it. You're going to wear yourself out. But he had heard the voice, voice of God. God had made it, made it very plain to him. Not only then, but God had told him before. And so he was to be obstinate and stubborn. And courageous means brave. It means bold. And it means be secure. Glory, glory. Well, why was God telling him all that? Because it's going to look like this thing ain't working. <laughs> it's going to look like ain't nothing happening. And that's when you and I give up. You know, I've been doing this day. It just ain't nothing happening. Now, don't get me wrong. You need to know. Sometimes ain't nothing happening because we're done our thing instead of God's thing. Really? But when God told us, see, that's something about the will of God that it won't leave you. Even in the middle of it, you want to give up a thousand times. But it won't leave you. It, in fact, it'll get stronger. And sometimes you, we want to say, God, would you just leave me alone? <laughs> Praise God. Because you feel that way because it looks like it's getting worse. 
But what God has to do is to try us, has to sift us, had to get all the stuff out of us that would hinder us from doing what he wants us to do the way he wants us to do it. So sometimes, even though it seems like he's delaying, he's not delaying, he's testing. Yes. He is taking and he's taking out of us stuff that will hinder us. And so we need to be patient in the process. Praise God. Now, let's continue with that. Praise God. So he says to him in verse 7, be strong so that you can observe the law and don't turn to the left or to the right of it so that you will prosper in everything. So God said, first of all, I need you to make sure that you observe the law. That means to treasure in the memory. You can only treasure something in your memory. Do you know even stuff you put in your memory won't stay unless you practice it continuously? Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of times people we've seen a long time, yeah, what's the name now? But if you call it that name every day, <laughs> you don't forget the name. Are you understanding what I just said? Yes, come on. You don't forget it. The reason sometimes we can't recall something right away is because we hadn't heard it in a while. And so... What God was saying to him is to keep this word. Now, Proverbs 4 really tells us uh, the same thing. Verse 20 through 22 is one that I listen to uh, on a regular basis every day. I need to hear that before. Amen? Because it talks to us about it. You, the, the, uh, give your attention to his word. Yes. Don't let it depart out of your sight. Keep it in your ear. Mm -hmm. Why? Because if you'll do this, praise God, it is health and healing to your body and to all your flesh. And so he said... What God was saying to, in Proverbs day, he said, keep the word in your presence. Yes. Look at it, listen to it, praise God, and keep it in your mental capacity. That means to meditate, to talk about it, to do those things. It's important. When God is giving you something, he's giving you a, a promise to go with it, you got to keep promising, keep putting that word out there constantly. Because every time you're doing what you're doing, and I'll, we'll get to this in the next section, you're opening up that word for revelation to you. Praise God. So that's why he said, he talked to him about that. He said, I want you to observe this word uh, so that you can keep and preserve. And, and, and he wanted him to have this word before him. He said, don't turn from it to the left or the right. If you're not keeping the word in your heart and mind, you have a tendency to turn another direction. Yeah. And we'll say, Lord, I prayed about this. And God said, yeah, but here's the thing. My word go with what I'm doing. Wee. You're asking me to do something contrary to my word. So you're not keeping the word in your mind because the word would help you discern when I said that this is what I meant. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's going to be important to us to keep the word of God. And so we need to study. I'm not talking, we need to read the Bible. And you can have just your readings that you do. But you and I need to study the Bible. Yes. We, let me talk to these ministers out there. <laughs> you can't just study the Bible when you get ready to preach a sermon. Come on here, Pastor. You got to have your study. There's a lot of time that I'm studying for a message, but I'm studying something else. God talking to me personally about my own life, yeah. and I'm studying that to get a full revelation of that. See, their studying should be something that all of us are doing, and we should do it on a regular basis. Yes. You finish with one topic, the Holy Ghost will give you something. If you'll go deep into it, he holds it up before you, but it's up to you to search it out. And if you and I are not willing to search it out, there's some revelation, there's some discernment that you and I will not have. Now, this would not make God love us more, but it would help us to be more prosperous. And we yes. see, and so God is giving. See, God has given him some assurances. God has told him what he was going to do. Praise God. But it was up to Joshua now to get the word in so he didn't miss it. Mm -hmm. God told him that I'm going with you. God told him that the, where the land is. God told him I will be with you. God told him ain't nobody going to be able to stand before you. Yes, sir. But the key to all of that was observing the word. Mm -hmm. So God has given you and I some precious promises that by these we might be partakers of the divine nature glory, that he gave us. But, but we need to understand these precious promises, the word of God, will help us to come into it. For many of us, we have not come into what God wants us to have because we are not diligent to study the Word. Oh, help us, Lord. The Word is not going to be just the only thing that help us come, but help us to stay where He placed us. Yes. To help us to keep moving forward into what He placed us to do. We got to become students of that Word. Now, these are just eternal disciplines. They won't, you understand that. Praise God. All right, let's continue. Praise God. So God told him to do that. Now, in verse 8, God said, Joshua's success was predicated upon the study 
of God's word. So I want you to go back over to that, and I want you to go back to verse 8. I know we read it, but I want us to look at it again, the King James Version. And I pray you still got yours in Joshua 1 and verse 8. Praise God. Now watch this. God said, listen, he promised him his presence. He promised him that nobody going to be able to stand before him. He promised him that he's going to give him the place. God had given him all these promises. But he only become a partaker through the word of God. It's, it, I mean, if we get nothing else, let's get that today. So in verse 8. Joshua 1, verse 8. Mm -hmm. This book of the law shall not depart out of my mouth. Don't you let nothing in your mouth come out of your mouth contrary to what I just said. Yes. See, uh, you have to understand this. Death and life is where? In the power. In the power of your tongue. And they that love it will eat the fruit. Fruit of what? There the, the, that, that fruit of what comes out of their mouth. Mm -hmm. And so we can't have, we're saying this today and then change it over here Come tomorrow. Here. We can't say that by a stripe on here today and over here, I'm just yes. as sick as I can be. Come on. We, we can't do that. We, we can't say, that. I don't know if I'm going to make it. It's everything going wrong. Listen, listen. I'm saying that stuff. Praise <laughs> God. Hey, the Bible said, let the weak say, I am. I'm strong. Come Glory on. to God. God said, listen to me. <laughs> it's not that you're denying this stuff going on, but the word of God is what will change yeah. it. You're speaking life. You're speaking the word. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. That's good, Pastor. Hallelujah now. So, uh, uh, go ahead, Susan. <laughs> All right. Back in Joshua 1, 8. Yes. Uh, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold up. He said, first of all, I want to show you how the control was coming out of your mouth. Because you need to understand the different life in the power of the tongue. And in order to control what comes out of your mouth, I got to control your thoughts. Yeah. Now, this goes right back to group study. I pray you've been on group studies because this is lining exactly, and you'll see this examining exactly up with group study when we're talking about our thought life. This is very, very important. So God said, now, I, I told you, don't let nothing come out your mouth. But here's how it's going to do. You're going to have to meditate on this word. Day huh? and night. All right. Hallelujah. He didn't just say day. <laughs> and night. He didn't just say night. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. He said, you're going to have to walk, talk, and think this Come name. On. Praise oh. God. Go, go ahead. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. If you don't meditate this day and night, you're not going to be able to observe to do. <laughs> you can talk all you want, sing all you want, skip all you want. If you want to be able to observe to do this, what I'm talking Lord about, to God. the only way you can do that now, day and night, you have to meditate. Observe here is very important. It means to treasure. Mm -hmm. It means to treasure in the memory and so that one may keep and preserve and take heed to or perform it. If, again, that's why I just told you about the word. If I don't keep this in my memory, eventually I'm going to lose it. Mm -hmm. One message we talked some time ago that we need to take heed. We got to take heed to what was spoken to us previously. So God will give us a scripture. He will give us a rhema, and we got to keep that word in our heart yes. and in our mouth. In our heart and in our mouth. Speaking it and thinking on it. Meditate. And we'll, we'll go ahead and talk a little bit more. Did, did you finish? For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Don't expect to make your way prosperous unless you take the prescription like I've been giving it to you. Mm -hmm. If you want to make your way prosperous, I'm giving you the prescription. Yes, come on here. All right? Here's the prescription. And you're going to have to take all of it. You can't take half of that pill a day. You take the whole pill. Just like I'm telling you to do it. If I tell you to take it once a day, once if I say take it twice a day, take it twice a day. Mm -hmm. Or don't expect to get the results I'm talking about. Go ahead. And then thou shalt have good success. Now go through the whole the one this again, uh, the whole scripture again. That Joshua 1 verse 8. Mm -hmm. This book of the law shall not Lord depart out of thy mouth. Yes. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, uh -huh. that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Yes, God. And then thou shalt have good success. The words that he was to speak must be in line with the word of God. Come on here. Why? Because of the angels. Hebrews 1 and 14 said, Are they not all ministering spirits mm -hmm. sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? See, now God sends, God and Jesus sends the angels to help us do the thing he's called us to do. 
he sends them, and they will only minister according to the word. Mm -hmm. Psalm 103, 20 said, Bless the Lord, ye his angels that Lord. excel in strength, that do his commandment, hearkening to the voice of his, his word. word. Now, deaf people will come and they say, well, you can send your angel to do this. I, I don't have a scripture for that. <laughs> they use this. They said, and not all ministers sent forth to minister for them. That's right, not the ministers so that they can, uh, if all of us sitting here commanding all the angels, where are we going? Some of us don't even know the word. We got these angels flying every kind of way. But we will take scriptures that we want to see something happen. God has a plan. God is working all things after the counsel of his will. And you and I may be seeing something, even though we took a script to do this, but it's not after the counsel of his will. Now, and so I, God wouldn't understand the angels are there. They're there to help me and, and support me and do things, but I ain't sending them nowhere. I'm not doing no thing. I know some people, uh, theology is different from that, and I'm fine with that. I'm just telling you and me yeah. that we work by the word of God. We use that word, praise God. See, when you're going to take something, make sure God said in one place, you have a word, one here, and then he said it's a second, and third is even more binding. You're not going to find this in Scripture where you see even the saints. You didn't see Paul and them sending nobody. You seen Peter and them sending no angels. You seen all that. They worked the word, and they understood who they yes. were, and they understood God would support his word. Praise God. And so, please understand, God will send angels on assignment. We will see it over and over and again, but we will see it. But we don't see throughout the Bible the saints sending angels. That's right. Please understand and stay within the parameters that God gave us so we'll be saved. Well, somebody said, well, I said, I said angel, and an angel showed up. Listen to me. That's why the Bible said, test the spirit mm -hmm. to see if it is the spirit of God. It's very important to be because the Bible said angels will come as our, uh, uh, Satan will come as our angel of light. Yeah, well, I talked to angel, and that angel took their signal. Well, it, 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 that ain't no big thing. If the devil put it on it, it can take it off. Please understand, and I want us to, this is very important. The Lord, when I was studying it, he put this on me so much for us to understand something. That's why the Bible said we have a more sure word of prophecy yeah. that is God's word. God works in line with his word. That's why he tells me, listen, this man, Joshua wasn't even born of the spirit. And yet, he was able to do things that we wish we could do. Mm -hmm. Why? He just did what God told him to do in his word. The man spoke and the son stands to you. Glory. Now, and that's somebody that wasn't even born again. But he had something more powerful, a more sure word mm -hmm. was God's word. Hallelujah. Let's Glory continue. To God. When we put God's word in our mouth, it is the same as the Lord speaking. Mm -hmm. Amos 3 and 3 Susan, would you turn that for me? Angels 3 and 3 for me, please, ma'am. Amos 3 and 3, can two walk together except they be agreed? See, when I agree with God's word and what God has told me. See, all Joshua is going to do is keep this word going in his mind. God, you said this, dude. This is what you told me to do. This is what. And so when I come to this place, I can say, y'all going to have to get up out of here. <laughs> and not because of me, but God said, that's your place. Mm -hmm. And when you get there, I'm going to give it to you. So... I'm in agreement with God, and I can look at you and say, you're going to have to leave here. I can say it with assurance, not because they're going to obey my word, but my word is in agreement with God's word he told me. And so praise God. So when we put God's word in our mouth, it's the same as the Lord speaking it. That's powerful because I'm just in agreement with God. I say what he says. Praise God. This allows the Lord to release the angels to assist us when we say what he said. Mm -hmm. Well, finally, oh, Lord, I got to hear it. Meditation. This is the last one of the internal because we've talked about it. We see God doing all of this with Joshua, giving him the word. He has to know the word. He has to do these things. Uh, and Joshua, we talked about prayer. Now, meditation. Joshua was commanded to meditate on the word day and night so that he may observe to keep with bounds. That's what they were observing, to keep with bounds. In other words, stay in the boundaries that yes. I gave you so that you can observe. I mean, don't get all up in pride talking about what you're going to do and this and all that. Well, I, you know, God did it. He did that. You, you're going to run up on something. Stay within the bounds of God's word, praise God, to do according to what is written. Psalm 1 and 2 said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and in that law that he meditate day and night. So you see, he's consistent. He didn't just tell Joshua that. We see David is now repeating it, all right? Psalm 63 and 6 said, When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches. Yes. 
He said, while I'm laying there awake, I'm not going to just lay that bed in my eyes. <laughs> I'm going to start meditating on God's word. Mm -hmm. I have found out when I'm sitting and I'm sitting awake and I look like I can't sleep, if I start quoting God's words, I'm meditating on it, all of a sudden I get sleepy. Mm -hmm. I said, all right, devil, loose thee. Loose here now. Praise God. Psalm 77 and 12. I will meditate also of all thy work and talk of thy doing. Why? Because that builds my faith. Yes. Hallelujah. It let me know what God will do. Psalm 143 and 5. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all thy works. I muse on the work of thy hand. Why? Because that builds my faith. It makes me strong in the Lord. Pray. If he did it once, he'll do it again. Yes. Yes, Hallelujah yes, to God. And so he stayed on that. Look at 1 Timothy 4.15. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them. Mm -hmm. Why? That thy profit, that thy profit may. may appear to all. If you meditate upon the word yes. and do what God, your profit will appear. People say, what's going on with you? so and so? Wow, you're really growing. There's a boldness there now. Why? The word is giving me. My profit will appear to all. Then Joshua could make his way prosperous. Then Joshua would have good success. Not because God told him. God gave him some promises. Mm -hmm. But the word, these precious promises, is what causes us to be partakers. Let me say that again. These Glory. precious promises of God's word causes me to be. When I meditate upon it day and night. Mm -mm -mm. See, meditation is like, praise God, uh, when we gave you up before. When you chew your natural food and you chew it slow it, then what happens is it allows it to be broken down and nutrients go more. If you gump it, you don't get the full uh import out of that food. Meditation brings revelation. Mm -hmm. Meditation will bring revelation. Meditation will bring revelation. Mm -hmm. Not just meditating on anything. That's right. On meditate word. on God's word. All right? Praise God forevermore. Now, Joshua was, to, to, was encouraged to, verse 9, he was encouraged to be of good courage, be not afraid. That means to cause the trembler terrify. Well, why? Because God was saying to him, you're going to see some stuff going to make you want to shake in your boots. You're going to go through some stuff. You're going to want to say, I don't know what in the world God was talking about. He said, this is why you can't be afraid. And then he said, don't be dismayed. Yes. Dismayed me to be shattered or broken. Have you gone through some stuff that broken you before? Yes. Let me lift up both of my hands. <laughs> Broke you. Praise God. Man, you said, that's it, man. I'm going in a cubby hole somewhere. Just hide out. Let me know when the storm's over, man. That's it. So he, he's letting him know, you're going to go through some stuff. You're going to see some stuff. That's why I'm giving you all of this and telling you all of this up front. You need to meditate on this word. So when you get there, they said, no, this is what God said. Mm -hmm. And you stay on that word. Praise God. The Lord is present wherever you go. Come on. That's a good word for you and I to take away today. Praise God. <laughs> Even though the Lord had given Joshua promises what he would do and how he wanted to use him to accomplish it, Joshua needed to practice certain spiritual discipline to be successful. Mm -hmm. Let me read it again. Even though the Lord has given Joshua promises what he would do and how he wanted to use him to accomplish it, Joshua needed to practice certain spiritual discipline to be successful. Did you know that Jesus, or uh, Jehoshua, Jehovah is salvation, practices the same discipline as Joshua. Joshua's name is Jesus' name in the New Testament, Jehoshua. Did you know mm -hmm. that Jesus being in the natural man had to practice the same discipline yes, he did. that Joshua had to do? Joshua took him out of bondage. I mean, Moses took him out of bondage, but Joshua took him into the new land. Mm -hmm. Jesus wanted to take you into the new thing yes. that God had given you. So, if Joshua had to do it, <laughs> Jehoshua, Jesus had to do it, what about you? We. Are you really ready to us to get into these disciplines so we can practice? I pray that you are. Now, if you're not born again, these disciplines without having his nature will not work for you. Because what nature? Well, you must be born again to get the new nature of God. When Adam fell mm -hmm. and Eve fell, their nature changed. By nature, they're sinful. And so God now, when we get born again and receive Jesus, our Lord and Savior, gives us a new nature to help dominate this fleshly body, this carnality. Now, when we get to heaven, we get a new body. Come on here. They don't have to wrestle with this one no more. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. That body won't be weak. It won't be. It doesn't need sleep. Praise God. It doesn't get tired. It can travel at, at the speed of thought. All right. But while we're still in this earth, 
We need that nature God has given us to dominate this nature. And the only way to do that, you must be born again. Mm. If you've never been born again, I want to pray for you now that you can receive this new nature. You can receive the gift of God, which is Jesus Christ, which will give you the Holy Spirit, will bring all these things into your life. So let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Thank Jesus, you, Lord. I pray for those men and women, young men and women, who mm -hmm. never made you the Lord of their life. Mm -hmm. The Word has told us that no one can come to you except you draw them. Yes, Father. So, Father, I stand in the gap and ask that you would draw that man and draw that woman, that young man and woman, Father, who has been thinking about this, Lord, who wants it but have been afraid that if they do it, they won't be able to maintain it. Would you draw them and help them to know that you're the one going to help them yes, thank you, to Father. maintain it this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Cool. Now, if you never made the Lord or if you walked away from the Lord, I'd like to give you to pray a prayer with me right now. Praise God. And I, if you'll do this and mean it with all your heart, you can get that new nature. So let me just pray. Well, I, I want to lead you, so I'm going to give you some. So please repeat after me. Father, I'm sorry for my sins. Please forgive me. I agree with your word that I am a sinner. And I'm in need of a Savior. I need a new nature. Yes. I believe that Jesus is the very Son of God. That he died on the cross and paid the full price for all of my sin. And I believe that if I invite Jesus to my heart and my life, he will do it now. Mm -hmm. He will do it this moment. Yes, thank you, Father. He will change me and I will be born again. So I invite Jesus. Lord thank Jesus, Lord. come into my heart. Change my life. I accept you as my Lord. That means my master mm -hmm. and my savior. That means my deliverer. Lord. Thank you for doing it now. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen means so be it. Glory to God. So if you did that now, I want to welcome you into the family of God. Come on. I bless the Lord for you being in there. Praise God. Thank God for you. Thank God for the decision. And now you're part of the family. Welcome to the family of God. My sister Henderson is going to give you more instructions. Yes, praise we God. do we'll give God praise and glory and honor for those of you that have made Jesus the Lord of your life. Yes, Amen. we do. Praise You'll God. You'll never regret it. I can tell you that right Hallelujah now. Hallelujah to God. Yes. Uh, we want to be a blessing with you and mm -hmm. to encourage you in your walk before the Lord. Yes, we do. If you are desiring to get some material that you can study uh, this new journey. Praise If God. you would send your information over to info, mm -hmm. I-N-F-O, at Varen Family Worship Center. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we will get some information back into your hands. Mm -hmm. You can also call us at 414-873-8687. Praise and God. And leave a message. And we will, at that moment when we get back into the office, we will return a call to you. Mm -hmm. uh, in the next couple of days, uh, we're going to be launching a new website. Praise God. And so uh, on that website, it'll give you even more detail on how to obtain mm -hmm. information concerning those that uh, have new salvation in Christ Jesus. Praise God. Uh, we are just very, very honored, very oh, yes, delighted we are. Thank you, that you have come to give Jesus Thank and you, make Lord. Praise the, God. the Lord the head of your life mm -hmm. and Lord of Lords. Glory Amen. to God. Glory to God. We will be mindful to be praying for you and with you as well. Mm hmm Pastor, can I go in? First of all, that was an excellent word. Praise God. Praise God. Can Thank I go you, right into these announcements? And then I got a lot of birthday shout outs. Let's do all Amen. of them. Amen. Praise God. Um, if somebody on the uh, live stream will also make sure that we put in this, this new date for the 35 year celebration. Uh, because we're getting information because originally it was scheduled for this evening. Mm -hmm. It has been rescheduled. And the updated flyer is on Facebook, mm -hmm. and it is for December 20th, and the time is from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m., and that is going to be a Facebook live stream as well as Zoom. Mm -hmm. So again, if you are in need of any other information on that, on Facebook, you will be able to see right there where you can go and get more information Thank you, Lord. in reference Hallelujah. to that. Praise uh, God. We are just so excited about what God has done for 35 years, mm -hmm. and we declare right now mm -hmm. we're going to do even more Praise in the next God. 
35 years. Praise Amen. God. Praise God. The marriage fellowship information that's coming up for this uh, uh, Friday, the 18th, mm -hmm. it was sent internally and it is also on the uh, Facebook uh, information as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you just need to be in a Christian marriage in mm -hmm. order to join us on that. Yeah. And so if you would, um, again, you can send your information over to get the link for that Praise as well. God. Praise God. I want to remind you for Wednesday's group study. Possessing Your Soul is the uh, group study series, and you can go right to the website right now. And I believe on the new website, it is going to also be under Inspirational Corner. Mm -hmm. So that is not changing. It is just being up, upgraded uh, to the new website. Amen. Praise God. So yeah. we give God praise and glory for Thank those you, Lord. Uh, different announcements. And now I want to go right into these different birthday shout-outs. And I want to start out with a huge apology uh, to what I call my twin brother. Somebody asked me, uh, they saw my brother Tommy Laban Purnell mm -hmm. on Facebook, and they asked me, say, are you all twins? Now, to, to Tommy, I know that's a compliment to you. <laughs> Amen. But for me, it was a compliment also. Amen. Amen. I give God, God praise Thank and you, glory. Lord. No, we're not twins. Mm -hmm. We're about four years apart in age. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so he's the older. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to send a loud Shout out for his birthday. It was December 10th. Praise God. And I completely let that slip mm. on last Sunday. Mm. So I want to, again, Tommy, happy birthday to you. It has passed, but I know you part of that Purnell family. Mm -hmm. And you just celebrate all month long. So Praise happy God. birthday to my brother, Tommy Laban Purnell. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then I want to go into these birthdays for this week uh, for December 13th, uh, going through December 19th. Uh, Sister Renee Edwards' birthday is December 14th, mm -hmm. and we honor the Lord for you. Mm -hmm. And then also, uh, Mother in this house, uh, Mother Ethel Howard's birthday, December 15th. Wow, praise Amen, God. and Thank we you. give God praise and glory for mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And then also on December 15th, on December 15th, my very favorite nephew on December 15th. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. <laughs> Because <laughs> I don't want somebody sending me over notes. Mm -hmm. Amen. On December 15th, Christopher Perez. His birthday Praise is God. December 15th. He's going to be my favorite on the 15th. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then also December 16th, we have Ray Cole Jr. Wow. His Praise birthday. God. Amen. We Praise give God, God. praise and Amen. glory Amen. for that. Amen. Also on December 16th, uh, Kelsey Cosmetics. Her birthday, amen. Mm -hmm. We give God praise and glory for that. Mm -hmm. December 17th, one Sanithia Williams, a daughter in this house, praise amen. amen. We give God praise and glory uh, for you and for your birthday. And then December 18th, Sister Evelyn Tony, a daughter in this house. Bless the Lord. Her Hallelujah. birthday, Praise December 18th. Mm -hmm. And then on December 19th, a whole 14 years of age, Xavier Shaw. Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give God praise wow. and praise glory yeah. uh, for that. I, Xavier, I say sh go on out there and celebrate large, but celebrate safe. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then on December 19th also, Miriam Tango. We give God praise and glory Blessing. for your birthday. Praise God. And I saved this best one, I believe, for last. On December 19th, mm -hmm. um, one Mariah Williams. Mm -hmm. On the 19th, she'll be a whole 19. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's all so right. So let me just get my handkerchief out. I say every one of you, mm -hmm. celebrate large. Praise God. But also... Celebrate safe. Hallelujah. We honor the Lord for your birthdays. We do. And we give God praise and glory for each and every one of you. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Amen. Pastor, mm -hmm. it's back in your hands at this well, time. Well, it's again good to be with you. We praise God for you. Thank you so much for your prayers. Uh, we just could not do these things without your prayers. Yes. Praise God. We are uh, certainly in challenging time, but that doesn't mean they have to be defeated time. Praise God. Amen. That means that God can do the miraculous even during our time. So thank you for praying. Continue to pray. Amen. Do it. And please be with us on this coming, again, Wednesday group study. Please download the notes. Uh, amen. So you can study and be prepared for those 
because these things are tying in with what we do. God is speaking to us. He's preparing us. Some of us have been asking God questions. Why? And God said, well, let me answer you. And so praise God. I'm going to celebrate and thank the Lord for it. Well, Pastor, can I read my scripture from this morning and, and close in prayer? You can Amen. Yeah. Please, please do. Yeah, this is for a word to the devil that he is not going to stop us. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Revelations, the third chapter, is mm -hmm. where we were going to be coming from this morning, mm -hmm. verses 7 through 13. Mm -hmm. And we're going to read it now mm -hmm. uh, on this other device. Glory to God. Praise God. Revelation 7, verse 7 through 13, reading actually uh, all six of those verses, reading it out of the Amplified Classic. And to the angel, the messenger of the assembly, the church in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. I say in Berean, put your church name in there. Mm -hmm. Right. These are the words of the Holy One, the true one, one who has the key of David, who opens and no one shall shut, who shuts and no one shall open. Mm -hmm. I know your record of works and what you are doing. See? I have set before you a door wide open, mm. which no one is able to shut. Praise God. I know that you have but a little power at this time, mm -hmm. but yet you have kept my word. Hallelujah. And you have guarded my message. Mm -hmm. And I have now renounced, and, and you have not renounced or denied my name. Take note, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews, say they are part of the body of Christ, mm -hmm. and are not, but lie. Behold, I will make them come and bow down before your feet, and learn and acknowledge that I have loved you, because you have guarded and kept my word of patient endurance, and have held fast to the lesson of my patience with expectant endurance that I give you. Mm. I also will keep you safe. From the hour of trial, Praise God. testing, which is coming upon this whole world mm -hmm. to try those who dwell upon the earth. I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have so that no one may rob you and deprive you of your crown. Mm -hmm. Who he who overcomes is victorious. And I will make him a pillar in the sanctuary of my God. Mm -hmm. And he shall never be put out of it. Or go out of it, and I will write him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which descends from my God out of heaven. And my own new name, he who can hear, let him listen to, and heed what the Spirit says to the assembly, to the churches. Mm -hmm. And Father, we just, just thank you mm -hmm. that we are listening and we are hearing. Mm -hmm. We thank you that you know our record mm -hmm. and we know that you know that you have kept our word mm -hmm. bottled up and father we have kept your word mm -hmm. and we thank you because we've kept your word you've also kept us safe. We thank you for who you are and for whom we belong to. Mm -hmm. Now strengthen this congregation of yes, believers. Praise strengthen God. those that have joined us on live stream across the world. Mm -hmm. Strengthen those that will also be a part of YouTube across mm -hmm. the world. And Father, I say strengthen us mm -hmm. that we might endure hardness as yes. a good soldiers, praise Lord. God. It may look like right now mm -hmm. that we're surrounded, mm -hmm. but we do decree and declare mm -hmm. we're surrounded with you mm -hmm. and we're surrounded with your word. And we will not fail because you are the God that has already gone before us. Mm -hmm. You're the front lid on our eyes and you also have our back in everything. Mm -hmm. So we bless you and we exalt you as king. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, praise God. Tuesday morning, 5 a.m. Prayer. Yeah. <laughs> Glory to yes. God. Let's do Hallelujah. that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right here now, praise God. The Lord bless thee and Yes, thank you, Lord. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and thank to be gracious God. unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee mm -hmm. and give thee peace. Lord, teach us these disciplines. Help us as we make a new start to strive to do everything to fulfill your yes, call, the you, will Lord. of God in our lives. 
We ask these things in Jesus' Thank name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless. We God love bless you. you. Appreciate you guys. Amen. All right. God bless.